In this video, I'll show you how to create an interactive dashboard in Microsoft Excel. A dashboard allows you to present the most crucial information for your organization in a clear and engaging way. The best part about this is it's simple to set up and you don't need any add-ins, just the standard version of Excel. Once you have created your dashboard, it will automatically update as new data comes in and when you are ready to share it with your colleagues, you can easily do so, providing them with valuable insights. As you can see, I don't have anything in this workbook yet, but luckily I have data to build my dashboard. Down below, let's click on the data worksheet. On the data sheet, here you will see sales data by the market. To build our dashboard, we will create a few pivot tables. The table that you see here is currently in a tabular format and this works really well for creating pivot tables. If you are new to pivot tables, I have included an overview video in the description of how to create a pivot table and I am gonna publish more advanced pivot table tutorial in the future, so stay tuned for that. As a first step, we need to make sure that our data here is in a table format. To turn it into a table, simply click anywhere in your data and then go up to the top ribbon and click on insert. Right here you have the option to turn it into a table. You can also press the shortcut key, Control plus T. Let's click on this. In this prompt, it asks me where my data is. And here it automatically identifies all of the different data that I want to bring into this table. Here it also asks me if my table has headers and this is my header right up here. It does. So I'll make sure that I check this box. Next, let's click on OK. All of my data is now included into a table and it has this nice table formatting. Next, I want to insert a pivot table. So once again, I'll click into my table and then up on the top ribbon, let's click on insert and over on the left hand side, there's the option to insert a pivot table. When you click on that, that opens up a prompt and it asks us what table or range we want to use. I'll simply select this table. This is the table that I just created. I'll place my pivot table on a new worksheet and then I'll click on OK. This now drops me into a new worksheet and I can now start building my pivot tables. For my dashboard, I want to have um, three different charts. So I'm going to need three different pivot tables and right now I only have one. If I go down below over to all of my different sheets, I can press the control key, click on sheet one and then drag it over. This will create another pivot table. It's just a copy of sheet one. Here I'll press the control key again, click on this sheet, drag it over. And now I have three different pivot tables and I'll choose these three different sheets to pull together all of my views for my dashboard. The first view I want to pull together is profit by country and uh, the product. Here I'll right click on this tab. I'll select rename and let me call this just what it is profit by country and uh, the product. Now that I have renamed this sheet, I'm ready to pull together my first pivot table. And once again, I want to know profit by country and the product. Over on the right hand side, I have all of my different pivot table fields. First, I'll select country and I'll pull that down into rows. Here we can see all of the different countries that we are prayed in for the Achieve More Donut company. Also over on the right hand side, I see a field called product. Here I'll drag that down to columns and here you can see all of the different donuts that we make here and trust me they are all extremely delicious. Okay, over here I'll select profit, bring it down into values and here I can see all of our different countries, all of the donut types and the associated profit. Now that my pivot table is all done, I'm ready to insert a chart and we are going to use this chart on our dashboard. To insert a chart, let's go to the top tabs and click on pivot table analyze. Over on the right hand side, there's the option to insert a pivot chart. Let's click on that. This opens up the insert chart dialog. And right here, I'm going to select the stacked column chart. Next, let's click on OK. And here now you can see a pivot chart representing all of this data. Now, when we did this sorting here, you will see all of the different markets are sorted from the largest over on the left down to the smallest on the right. Also with the stacked bar chart, here you will notice that the largest items are at the bottom and the smallest items are at the top. So it makes it easier to consume the data. Overall, this looks pretty good, but uh, I think I need a title on this chart just so when people look at it, they can understand what it is. 
let's go up to the top tabs click on design and over on the right hand side click on add chart elements right here we will go down to the chart title and i'll add it above the chart for the chart title i will simply describe what it is it's profit by market and uh, the product type before I bring this chart back to my dashboard, I want to clean up a more few things. Here I have all of these different fields, item, including on my chart. Here if I click on this, I can filter my product, but I don't want this cluttering up on my chart. So I could right click on the item and I'll select to remove or hide all field buttons on this chart. And when I select that, it really helps clean it up. I'm now ready to move this chart to my dashboard. Here I'll select the chart. I'll press Ctrl plus C. Next, I'll click over to my dashboard and I'll paste it into the sheet. And check that out. I now have my first visual on my dashboard. Here I'll zoom out just a little bit so I can see how it sits on my dashboard. Here I can select the chart item and if I right click on it and then drag it, it will snap into different positions. So this way I can organize my dashboard a little bit more easily. Here I'll position this first item right here and I'll extend it down just a little bit, maybe right down to this point. I think that looks pretty good. Next I want to create two more pivot tables for my dashboard and I'll do this a little bit more quickly. Down below I'll click on the next sheet and here I'll rename this and we will call this quantity sold each month. To track items sold each month, here I'll select the date and I'll make this my row. And right up here, I'll select quantity sold as the values. So here I could see by month how many items we sold. To help with the formatting, here I'll highlight all of the numbers and I'll insert the comma style. And I'll also remove the decimal points just like we did before. I'll click on pivot table analyze and here I'll insert a pivot chart. For sales over time, I think a line chart will work really well. I'll select this one and then click on OK. This now insert my chart and here I'll update the title to say unit sold each month. Here I'll remove the legend and I want to remove the fields just like I did before. I'll right click and I'll hide all field buttons on the chart. This now looks really good. So I'll copy it and I'll bring it into my dashboard. In my dashboard I'll press Ctrl plus V to paste and here I'll position it right near the top and here I'll reduce the size just a little bit like this. That looks pretty good. Lastly, I want to create one more pivot table for my dashboard. I'll go down to the bottom tabs and let me rename this one to profit by month. To create a pivot table with profit by month, it's going to be very similar to the last pivot table that we just created. I'll select months and I'll drag it down into rows. Next, I'll select profit and I'll pull it down into values. And here we see our profit by month. Next, I want to set it so it appears as a currency and I'll highlight all of these values and here I'll select the currency view. Also, I'll remove the decimal places. Next, I want to insert a chart. So once again, I'll click on the tab titled pivot table analyze and right here, I'll select a pivot chart. To represent data over time, line chart works really well and I don't know why profit decreased in August this much. Well, that's another thing. Right up here, I'll click on the title of the chart and uh, I'll put in profit by month. I want to remove all of the different fields. I think that will make the dashboard look better. Once again, I'll right click and select hide all the field buttons on the chart. Next, I want to bring this chart over to my dashboard. So once again, I'll select this chart, press Ctrl plus V to copy and then I'll click into my dashboard. Here within the dashboard, I'll press Ctrl plus V to paste it here. I'll position it under items sold each month and I'll make my best attempt at trying to make it just about the same size. Now just like we did before I can drag this and then this item will snap to the cells on the page. Here I'll do the same down here and now everything lines up really nicely. So far we have constructed a static dashboard but now I want to enhance its functionality by making it dynamic. To achieve this, let's start by selecting one of the items and then navigating to the Pivot Chart Analyze tab. Within this tab, we have the option to insert slicers and timeline. Let's begin by inserting a timeline. After selecting a date, we will click OK, which will insert a timeline slicer. We can then adjust its dimensions and position it alongside other items on the dashboard. Now let's insert additional slicer by selecting a pivot table, going to Pivot Chart Analyze and choosing insert slicer. 
We will select both country and product within the dialog box to enable quick filtering by these parameters. Once the slicers are inserted, we can clean them up by removing unnecessary headers and adjusting their size for a cleaner appearance. I'll right click on the slicer and will go to the slicer setting and click here on the display header. I'll uncheck this and press OK. And I'll do the same for the product. Alright, now I can resize these slicers and position the slicer here on the left hand side and set their dimensions. With the slicer in place, we can now easily filter the data on our dashboard. For example, if we only want to view data for India, we can select India from the slicer and the corresponding pivot table will update accordingly. However, we need to ensure that these slicers are connected to all of the pivot table on the dashboard. By right clicking on the slicer, I'll access report connection and select all relevant pivot tables. We ensure that changes made in one slicer are reflected across all pivot tables. I'll do the same for the other two slicers as well and check this out. When I click on my slicer now, it updates all of my different pivot table over on the side. So this dashboard is definitely becoming a lot more interactive now. This dashboard is working really well. But what if new data comes in and we want to make sure that our dashboard reflects it? Well, it's very easy to take care of. Down below, let's click into the new data tab. And here you will see that we have additional data for 2022. And it's formatted in exactly the same format. Here, let's select all the data from this table and then press Ctrl plus C. Once you copy all of the data, let's click into the data sheet. Go all the way to the bottom of the table. This is the table that we use to construct all of our pivot table and here simply paste it all of the new data. Because we turn this into a table, it automatically incorporates this new data into that same table. Next on the bottom, let's click back into our dashboard. We want to make sure that the dashboard now reflect all of the latest data. To do that, let's click on one of these pivot charts and then go up to pivot chart analysis. Within the ribbon here, there's the option to refresh. Let's click on this and then select refresh all. And there you will see that your dashboard automatically takes all of the latest data into account. This dashboard now is starting to look pretty nice, but it still has the look and feel of Excel. I want it to look more like a proper dashboard. To do that, let's go up to the view tab up on top and with the sheets selected right here, you have the option to turn off the grid lines. There you don't have those typical cells in Excel. Also here I can turn off the headings. So now it's really starting to feel more like a dashboard. This dashboard is now starting to look really nice, but maybe the color scheme doesn't match your organization. Well, that's not a problem. We can also change that. Up on top with the top tabs, click on the one titled page layout. And over on the left hand side, you can choose from all of these different themes and that will apply it to your dashboard. All right. So that was it for today's video. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, hit like and subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.